Hi everyone, it's May, and today I'll be showing you how I darn a new pair of point shoes. I use the Suffolk darning kit, and in here there are a couple of things. There is a pair of scissors, there's also darning thread and two darning needles. And this next item might seem weird, but I also keep a vinyl glove in here. It helps push the needle through when there are thicker parts of the shoe. So as you can see, here are my point shoes. I have worn them a couple of times because I wanted to see where specifically I needed to darn. But you can also darn a brand new pair of point shoes. It really doesn't make a difference. You will need a lot of thread to darn your point shoes. So go ahead and take a bunch of it. I did about two wingspans worth, which isn't really an accurate measurement, but it's a lot of thread. Don't be afraid to use too much. Here I am putting my thread through my needle. As you see, I'm doubling up my thread. And then here I am knotting my thread. This is how I do it. I wrap the thread around my finger. I sort of tangle it up, pull it off my finger, and then I pull it into a knot. Now we are ready to start darning. So this is the bottom of my point shoe. While we're darning, we need to keep in mind that our darning stitches should be about 45 degrees to the shoe. And a way you can see this is if you poke your needle through and it makes the sort of 45 degree angle, that's where you should put your stitching. If you want your darning to be really accurate, you can go ahead and mark this area in a pen or a pencil. I won't be doing that. I'll be okay without it. To start darning, we're going to focus on the right side of the shoe here. Doesn't matter which foot it is, right or left. And we're going to stick our needle through and pull it through the shoe about this much. Over here, you can see I am using my vinyl glove to sort of poke it through. And like I said, we're pulling the thread all the way through. And during darning, you want to make sure that your thread is always fully pulled through and that it's not tangled up like it was there for a second. Now for this next stitch, you want to go right under the stitch you just made. And for about the same length, you're going to want to poke your needle through. Now don't put your needle through all the way. You're going to take the piece of thread that is attached to your needle, so this one furthest to the right, you are going to pull it up and underneath that needle, and then making sure everything is nice and secure, you're going to pull that needle through. And this is going to create sort of a loop. Again, make sure nothing is tangled up. As you can see here, my thread was tangled around one of the other knots. So that is what our darning should look like so far. Sort of like this loopy knot pattern here. Now for the next stitch, we're going to go into that loop we just made through both pieces of thread. And again, we're going to go right underneath that stitch for about that same length. Take the thread attached to the needle, so the one furthest to the right, and you're going to pull it up and underneath the needle. Again, make sure it's underneath. And then making sure everything is nice and secure, not tangled, we're going to pull that needle through. This is what it should look like now. Again, we're going to put the needle through that loop, go right underneath that stitching that we just made and poke the needle through about this much. You could go a little shorter, a little longer, whatever you'd like. Again, take the thread closest to the needle, the one attached to the needle, the one to the right, pull it up underneath the needle, and then pull that needle through. So we're basically going to follow this same pattern around the whole shoe. Again, you can decide the length of each stitch that you want. I sort of chose this length because it was not too short, not too long. Just choose a medium stitch length that this is your first time darning. Now as you can see, I've gone all the way around and I'm making that last sort of stitch, going through that loop, pulling the thread up and underneath the needle, and then pulling the needle through. Now that we've gone all the way around, it's time to start going down. So stick your needle behind those stitches we just made, and then take the thread that's attached to the needle, so the one up top, pull that thread down underneath and then back up so it's under the needle, similar to how it was when we did that first round of stitches, and then pull that needle through, again making sure it's not tangled up on any knots. 
and it should look something like this. We are going to repeat that same sort of pattern. So stick the needle underneath the first round of stitches that we made. And it doesn't have to be too long or too short in the middle. This is the length I'm doing. Take that thread, pull it down underneath and then back up so it's underneath the needle and then pull it through, making sure it's not tangled up. Once again, stick your needle underneath that first set of stitching and you can decide how close together you want these stitches. I'm going for a pretty medium sort of distance here. Stick that needle underneath, take the thread up top, pull it down underneath and back up and then pull that needle through. Again, really make sure that nothing is being tangled up during this process or otherwise you're going to have a sticky situation. So here I am repeating this process all the way around. And as you'll see in a second, I do start to run out of thread. And do not worry if this happens to you. It is obviously not the best thing, but it's not the end of the world. And I'm going to show you how to continue sewing once you run out of thread just in a second here. So here's my darning so far, and as you can see, I ran out of thread. So I'm sticking my needle up behind that stitching, and I'm pulling it through, but I'm not pulling all of the thread through. Instead, I'm gonna loop my needle through that remaining thread and then pull it tight. I'm going ahead and cutting that thread, but I'm leaving maybe about a centimeter, maybe a centimeter and a half, of extra thread over there that I'm going to incorporate into the rest of my stitching so it looks a little bit more flawless. As you can see, I got some more thread, I redid my knot, and now I'm going back in just as I did before. I'm doing one plain old stitch like this just to get my needle and thread in there. And then I'm going to try to put these loose ends underneath the stitching I'm about to make. So I go ahead, back like I just did, and I stick that needle underneath the previous stitching. As you can see, I'm trying to sort of do it close to that extra thread. I pull the needle closest to the thread down underneath and back up, and then I pull the needle all the way through, again, making sure it's not tangled up. But I am trying to make sure those loose ends are covered by that thread. Here, I'm being really careful again with the same sort of technique to get those loose ends underneath this knot and if it's not perfect and there are some loose ends sticking out do not worry you can just cut those off and you'll be fine i'm just trying to sort of hide them a little bit now i'm just going through the rest of the shoe and finishing up that darning again with the same pattern of going down pulling the needle underneath and back up and then pulling that needle all the way through now as you'll start to see here my darning is not perfect but this is actually okay because for me darning just helps make the shoe last longer now if you are doing this darning to make you more stable on point you would want to be a little bit more precise than i am now I'm all the way around and I'm finishing this darning like I did before when I ran out of thread. I'm sticking the needle underneath those previous stitches. I'm pulling it through, but not all the way. And I'm going to stick my needle through that remaining loop two or three times. So over here I did two, but you could also do three if you'd like. Then I go ahead and cut off that thread pretty close to that knot. And there we go, there's the finished darning. Like I said, it's definitely not perfect, but for me, it's just going to make the shoe last longer. Again, if you want to be more stable on point and that's why you're darning, you would want to be a little bit more precise than I am. With all that being said and done, if you found this video helpful, go ahead and like it. If you want to see more content from me, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. As always, don't get injured.